In this video, my first look into the Leica SL3, a camera that so far, so good, has actually surprised me. So we're gonna be talking about some of the things that I like about this camera, but more specifically from the perspective of someone that shoots a lot with M-bodies, but someone that shot for over 12 years with Sony cameras. And let's actually start by clearing out some of the specs out of the way. I'm not gonna bore you with all of them because probably you watched all the videos. But the main thing that we have to know is that the Leica SL3 has a brand new sensor, the 60 megapixel sensor that we also have seen in the Leica Q3, as well as the brand new Maestro 4 processor, which is gonna allow this camera to have a greater capability than prior versions. The other thing that's gonna be new in this camera is going to be the overall size of the camera. It's gonna be a little bit smaller, about five millimeters in this direction, and also it's gonna be about two to three millimeters shorter than the SL2. So the ergonomics of the camera is going to be, in my opinion, kind of like right on point. It is not too small or too big. And I always thought that the Leica SL2 was a little bit too big. And even though the size difference is not a lot, you can actually feel the you know lighter weight of the camera and the much more reduced size. Now, another thing that we need to highlight is going to be the rear screen of the Leica SL3, because right now we have something similar than what we have in the Leica Q3. We have that tilt screen, but this time, this screen is going to clear out the uh, EBF. And that's gonna be really important because on the Leica Q3, as you can see right now, um, a lot of the times, you know, you are blocking part of the screen with the EBF. This one will retract uh, completely away from the EBF. And it's also going to fold at a 90 degrees where the one on the Leica Q3 actually still, you know, tilt at an angle. Another thing that I noticed is that the screen actually has a different aspect ratio than the one from the Leica Q3. This one seems a little bit wider and bigger overall. Now let's discuss about the new button dial layouts. As you can see in this camera, some things have changed. And I counted about 12 buttons in this camera. When you look around the camera, it just doesn't seem that you have all those buttons. And when I say 12 buttons, I'm also counting some of the dials that can be pushed in as well, including the shutter release. Now, let's actually turn back the camera and we're gonna see that the three buttons that were on the left-hand side, now they have been moved to the right-hand side, just like we have seen in the Leica Q3. And I think that this is a great implementation because it allows you to control those buttons with your thumb. And if we take a look at the camera from the top left, we're gonna realize that there is a brand new dial. Now this dial actually comes configured to be an ISO dial, but you can always dive into the menu and reconfigure for whatever you want. So let's talk about the battery on the Leica SL3. And as you can see, it's the same system. You know, you have this switch right here, poke the battery, the battery releases but this time we have a 2200 milliamp hours battery. Now this one is the same battery that we can find in the Leica Q3, and even though this battery is gonna have higher capacity, I do feel that the Leica SL3 is very power hungry. So some of the things that I have done to mitigate that battery hungry issue is actually turn off the screen in the ABF when I'm not using it. So what I have done is I actually have configured the function button to be the button that's gonna turn off the screen. So most of the time I shoot with the EBF, so when I put the camera in my eye, you know, the sensor of the EBF is gonna awaken that EBF, and when I remove the camera from my eye, it's gonna turn it off. Now, it makes a lot of difference when it comes to battery life. Now, another thing that I have done right here is to configure this button to enable or disable image stabilization. Most of the time, I don't need the image stabilization, specifically if I'm gonna be shooting photo in a super sunny day, shutter speed is gonna be high. Now, I will re-enable the image stabilization in lower light conditions for slower shutter speed, or if I wanna shoot video, and this once again, it's gonna make a huge difference in your battery life. I don't know how much percentage I say, but I do feel that my battery now can last almost the whole day. And if I wanna shoot you know, lower angles that I'm gonna need the screen, all I have to do is tap on the function button again and turn it on whenever I need it. Now, speaking about the screen, this screen is not gonna be as bright as I would like it to be, and I actually compare with my Leica M11. The Leica M11 has a way brighter screen. And I found this being a problem mainly if you're trying to use the menus in a very sunny day or preview your photos, whatever the case may be, you're gonna realize that even with a screen at 100%, it's not gonna be enough. Another thing that Leica has done is redesign the menus, and as you can see right now, we have new icons and a new layout. Now, specifically when using the menus, as you can see, 
this menu actually has a gray or black background. Some of the buttons are gonna be a light gray or white, and it makes it really difficult to actually preview what's going on in super sunny situations. But I think that Leica could actually push a firmware update that is going to allow the camera to have kind of like a negative or sunny weather type of menu where everything that's black, meaning the background now is white and the icons could be actually in black. All right, and let's talk about the brand new on off buttons because no longer we have a rocker switch. And I'm still trying to get adjusted to this. I don't know yet how I feel about that, but I think it's a great implementation. Now, I have the camera completely off and to start up the camera, all I have to do is a deep press and the camera is gonna turn on. Now, this was really fast compared from prior versions and even compared to my Leica M11. I wanna put a comparison between this camera and the Leica M11, check it out. And as you can see, the SL3 does in a split of a second. Also, the Leica SL3, I think it does it a little bit faster than my Sony a7R5, so here's an example. Now, you can also set up the camera to turn off automatically after a certain time, and to do so, you're just gonna quick tap on the camera, and the camera is gonna go to sleep. Now, I do like that implementation. The only thing is that a lot of the times it's gonna require that you use the second hand, and I would have wished that Leica would have moved that button maybe right next to the rear dial. I think that would have been a much better place for that button to be. Now, the other thing that you could do in the camera is turn it off completely, and you do that by depressing that button, the Leica logo is gonna show up, and that's when you turn the camera off. And even in that mode, the camera is gonna turn out really quick, check it out and the camera is back on. I mean, it's really, really fast. Now, I don't think the camera actually goes to uh, off mode completely. I think the camera is still alive, you know, in some way, probably consuming very little energy because if I remove the battery, pop it in right now, and now I try to turn on the camera, the boot up time is going to be different, check it out. Bottom line, I love this implementation of faster wake up time and I hope the Leica is gonna implement this across all the Leica cameras moving forward. And let's talk about storage options. And one of the things that we have to highlight in here is that the door that covers the two uh, storage options is going to have now a switch that you press it and then when you slide it, you can open the door. I actually like that implementation because in the prior version, you could actually open the door accidentally and now you know with a switch, it's much more secure. So we're gonna have CF Express Type-B storage and SD card UHS-2. Now, I personally prefer to have two uh, SD card UHS-2, but I know that some people that are gonna be using this camera heavily for video, they are gonna actually take advantage of that faster you know, read and write speed. And let's talk about inputs and outputs, and we're gonna have the same rubbery doors, and a lot of people don't like them, and I'm one of them, but I understand why they do that. It allows you know, the poor door to be flexible, so if you wanna twist your wires you know, towards the front, you can do that. So we are gonna have the microphone input, we're gonna have a headphone jack, full-size HDMI, and the USB-C port. Now this one is the one that can allow you faster transfer, it's the latest USB-C, I believe it's the three version. So you know this is an improvement from the prior SL2. And all-terrain shooters like myself can appreciate the brand new IP54 rating of this camera. And I believe that like SL3 may be the very first camera without rating having a tilt screen of this kind. This means that the camera is gonna be dust and water resistant. It's not gonna be submergible, of course, but it's good to know that now we have the weather resistance in the Leica SL3. So let's talk about video specs in the Leica SL3. And even though I haven't shot a lot of videos, I have shot some and I'm pretty impressed. First of all, the first thing that I wanna notice is that um, you, know, you are gonna be constrained with some of the uh, settings of your video based on the media that you have. And right now I have an SD card UHS-2, uh, it's a V90, so I'm constrained to some of the things that I can select. Like for example, I select uh, MOV as my movie format, 24 frames per second. And as you can see, I'm constrained to the H.260 for in uh, 4K video. Also, the megabits per second that I can write out is also constrained, you know, I cannot change anything. And I think that this has to do with the write speed of this car. Uh, most likely, if you put a CF Express uh, Type-B, you're gonna be able to shoot at, you know, different formats and customize the experience a little bit more. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about shooting video with this camera. And I have to say that it is very pleasant. One of the things that I noticed that is really good is actually the image stabilization in the SL3. And when I heard that this camera was going to be downgrading from the 5.5 stops to the five stops of image stabilization, I was a little bit concerned, but it wasn't until I actually started shooting with this camera and realized that the IBIS works 
really, really good. It works great in video and it works great in photo. Now, one of the things that you're gonna see is that, you know, hand holding the camera does produce this great result. And you may see, you know, from time to time, the side to side motion when you're walking with a camera. When I compare this image stabilization, the five stop versus the uh, seven stops from some of the other cameras that I own, it's not different at all. And in my opinion, in some areas, I think that this IVIS may be better than some of the uh, competitors out there. So don't let the five stop, you know, fool you. I think that this may be a case where Leica under promise and over deliver. All right, so let's talk about some of the specific video features. One is gonna be the Leica Log or the L Log. Really good to shoot with, really easy to grade, and you can also customize LUTs or pick from some of the pre-selected LUTs that are right here, so you can preview on the screen kind of like a greater version of the log. That is actually really impressive. Another thing that is impressive in this camera is that we have shutter angle versus shutter speed, and you can choose both. Now, I have selected 180 degrees. That's something really good, something that we don't have in the much more popular hybrid shooting cameras from Sony or Canon, so that's great. And for the first time, Leica has added a time code synchronization for multi-camera shooting. Also, we have, you know, the histogram, which we can preview as luminance or the waveform as well in color. So it's also really good. You know, we do have in the monitor a lot of features that are very video centric. All right, so let's go back to photo talking. And this is the main reason why I got this camera. So mainly I'm using this camera with prime lenses. And as you can see, I have the 50 millimeter Summicron, the 35 that is actually in order, the 35 Sigma, the 50 millimeter Sigma as well, and the 24 to 70. Now I love shooting with this camera with prime lenses. That's mainly how I'm gonna be using this camera. And the experience is really comfortable. You know, I can handhold the camera and even hand the camera on my neck for hours, not feeling that I'm logging a lot of weight. Now, in terms of out of focus, the out of focus is gonna be very responsive. And it's not on par where Sony or Canon may be at right now, but I think that Leica has made huge improvements when it comes to that department. Now, one of the things that I noticed at the beginning is that the eye out of focus wasn't as responsive as I would have wanted to be. I figured that sometimes, you know, when I reveal some of the image on the computer, the eyes were out of focus. And I noticed that uh, when I went to the menu to customize the uh, uh, focus tracking performance, I had to set out to pet and children, which is actually a lower pace of out of focus performance. So then I switched to sport mode and that's when I actually was nailing pretty much every single time the eyes. Also, I actually cranked up some of the options as you can see right here and that really helped my out of focus to be very responsive. So feel free to dive in into the menus and you know make adjustment as you need. So let's talk about one of the most important thing that's gonna be image quality. And the image quality straight out of the gate from this camera is gonna be kind of like amazing, you know? I think that in most cases, I don't even have to grade the pictures. I can use them like that, print them or upload them, whatever and I'm gonna be happy with that quality. Now, it is not something that I can say about my Leica M11, which is the other system that kind of like my go-to system, you know, every day. Now, I made a comparison right here. I've shot the same image with the same lens with both cameras, same parameters, same settings, and you can see the different color on both images. And this is because both cameras are gonna have different color signs. Now, the Leica SL3 is gonna have 15 stops of dynamic range, and even though I have no way to measure dynamic range, I do see that I have a more um, recoverability than on my Leica M11 with the SL3. Take a look at this image right now. You know, highlights, you know, I can recover the highlights more, and also the shadows. So, image quality is, you know, spot on in this camera, and I am very pleased. Now, if you like to shoot uh, JPEGs, you also have the Leica looks, you know, and something that Leica introduced a while back ago in other cameras. You know, there are a lot of options to choose from and the results are also incredible. So could I recommend this camera? And I think that I need to put more time, you know, discovering this camera further. You know, a lot of the time, some of the quirks appear after a couple of months of shooting thousands and thousands of pictures. But so far, I shot a couple of thousands of pictures with this camera. And I have to say that I haven't had a single lockup issue, which is not the same thing that I could say with my Leica M11. At the beginning, I have some of the freezes. Nothing with the Leica SL3 performs really good. I really like what Leica has going on with the SL line, specifically the SL3. It's a much more 
more compact experience. So if you don't like a glass, I think it's a no brainer, even though you can adapt, you know, like a glass to any camera, you're gonna be very happy with the compatibility of this body with some of the Leica glass, like in glass that you may own already. So again, I am going to be doing a video um, maybe a few months from now with my definitive review of this camera, but so far, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. And if you have any further questions regarding the Leica SL3, drop a comment down below. Also, let me know if you own it, how is it going for you? And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this one, and until then, I'll see you in the next video.